Hello everyone, this is Dr. Daniel again from Daniel's Blood Lab, uh, My Blood Lab. Uh, I'm a hematologist specialist working in Korea. Today I will introduce the overall uh, series, overall scheme of uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation in a very brief way. So, uh, how do you think the bone marrow stem cell transplantation? Bone marrow stem cell transplantation is a procedure that replaces the diseased stem cell with the new stem cell from the donor. So, for the first time, we needed to evaluate the donor uh, for appropriate donor from the healthy donors. Uh, if a patient who requires the bone marrow cell transplantation, the patient needed to take some blood test to, to confirm the HRA typing. Usually we check the HRA 10 locus loci and A, B, C, D, R, D, Q. And this uh, HRA is located in both sides of the chromosome. So we needed to check the five pair 10 loci and the chromosome. After checking the patient HRA type, we needed to evaluate the matched sibling donor for the first time. Uh, uh, but the matched sibling donor means any sibling, the, the brother and sister who has the, the same HRA type, you can find the matched sibling donor with a chance of 25% if you have a sibling. And if there is any, uh, uh, if there is not a matched sibling donor, we need to evaluate the unrelated donor. And in Korea, we have about uh, 390 uh, volunteers who are waiting for the broad stem cell donation. So after checking the uh, patient HRA typings, we can search the HRA uh, donor banking uh, in a database and we can find some appropriate matched the unrelated donor. But sometimes we can find the five matched unrelated donor, but uh, in a very specific uh, cases, we can find more than 100 volunteer for hematopoietic stem cell donation. Listen three, we can use the half identical family don't mismatch the donor, which means that if a parent has this, uh, some kind of blood disease, his uh, daughter or son, his, uh, his offspring can uh, donate his uh, stem cell to their parent or vice versa. Or if a family member uh, especially the brother and sister has the half and can match the uh, HRA and the sibling can donate his stem cell to the patient. After selecting the appropriate donor, patient is usually admitted to the laminar pro room and they take the bone marrow biopsy and some evaluation and the patient uh, it will receive the conditioning regimen. The conditioning regimen is a, a series of the drug or radiation to suppress the patient's normal marrow function and some immunologic uh, function. Because we have uh, uh, some normal uh, immune response to reject the other foreign body from our side, uh, outside from, uh, from outside uh, entrance, we needed to suppress the, the immunologic function of the patient. And after the treating this kind of a drug or radiation, this radiation or drug can remove all the uh, malignant cell in the body because uh, uh, for the hematopoietic stem cell, if we use this kind of radiation or chemotherapy, some remnant uh, malignant cell can be removed successfully. Some uh, hematopoietic malignant cells is very, very uh, resistant to chemotherapy, but 
when we use this kind of radiation or high dose chemotherapy for the conditioning, this kind of very resistant uh, malignant cell can be removed successfully. So if we're using this condition, we can expect two kinds of functions. The first is immunosuppression. To prevent from any rejection, graft rejection. And the second is some myelosuppression, which means they remove the uh, removal of the malignant cell from the marrow. So we can uh, classify this condition into two types. The first type of the classification is a total body irradiation containing conditioning versus non-TBI conditioning. When we use the TBI containing regimen, the regimen is consisted of two types of different treatment, uh, such as uh, radiation, Plus a draw, but when we choose the non-TBI conditioning, we do not use the uh, irradiation. Instead of that, we can use the draw, such as uh, busulpan, some alkylating agent, etc. So there is a uh, two types of conditioning, such as myeloblastic conditioning and reduced intensity conditioning. The myeloblastic conditioning means that. Uh, we can increase the dose of drug and radiation up to the maximum intensity to remove all the immunology function and remove all the disease cells, including malignant cell. But reduced intensity conditioning is usually a modified one to decrease the dose of chemotherapy and radiation. Uh, previously, we thought that the myeloblastic conditioning is more uh, favorable especially in the hematology malignancy because the myeloblastic conditioning is very good at removing all the malignant cell because of the high, high intensity of the drug and radiation. But when we compare these two types of conditioning directly, the myeloblastic conditioning has some limitation that the treatment related mortality is usually increased. But, but for the reduced intensity conditioning, the treatment related mortality is less common when compared with the myeloblastic conditioning, but it has a problem that when we use the reduced intensity conditioning, the relapse rate is usually increased. So myeloblastic conditioning has some shortcoming that it can increase the treatment related mortality, but reduced intensity conditioning also has some shortcoming that it can increase the relapse uh, relapse late. So the, when you compare these two uh, conditioning regimens very directly, uh, yeah, so it's very, very difficult to compare these two types of uh, conditioning directly. But we uh, now concluded that in some uh, special situation, except some special situation, the, especially for the hematologist disease, the mild conditioning versus reduced the intensity conditioning shows the uh, both as uh, comparable, comparable outcome. So uh, we usually use myeloblastic conditioning for young adults, but if the patient has old, uh, uh, if the patient is old and has some some comorbidity such as cardiac problem, some liver problem, the kidney problem, we can use the reduced intensity conditioning instead of myeloblastic conditioning. So after receiving the whole conditioning which consists of the, the total body radiation or non-TBI containing chemotherapy. And then the donor usually donated his blood cell, uh, stem cell, and previously used the bone marrow stem cell. So you, to achieve the bone marrow stem cell, the very aggressive process, procedure is required. The donor is usually anesthetized and uh, we needed to we needed to puncture he paid the donors the iliac bone more than 100 times is very very time consuming and very painful process to the donor but recently we uh, are now uh, cu uh, currently use the peripheral brother stem cell instead of bone marrow stem cell 
A paper blood stem cell is usually a process to collect the patient, the donor's stem cell in, in the paper blood using the flow cytometry, the blood cell collector, uh, such as uh, by very, it's very similar process to collect the blood cell uh, for the uh, blood donation. Uh, so when we compare these two types of blood stem cell cells, previously the bone marrow stem cell has some, uh, some favorable uh, outcome, especially to in, in, the, in the aspect of the graft versus host disease, because the bone marrow stem cell is usually uh, did not increase the GBH, the graft versus host disease rate. When we use the perfect blood stem cell, the GBH rate is also relatively higher than the bone marrow stem cell. But when we also compare the relapse rate, the purple blood stem cell is more favorable option because the, G the presence of the GBHD usually decreased the relapse in the, uh, especially the, in the hematology malignancy. So, uh, except a specific case such as uh, aplastic anemia, we can use both stem cell cells uh, almost in the same way. But for the convenience of the donor, we uh, now currently use the pepper blood stem cell instead of bone marrow stem cell. And in Korea, uh, more than 90% of the bone marrow stem cell transplantation is uh, performed using the pepper blood stem cell. So when we collected this blood stem cell uh, from the pair donors paper blood, the paper blood stem cell is usually delivered using the bag such as the blood product and the patient will receive this blood product, the stem cell, so in a, such a kind of way of receiving the blood transfusion. And when the patient receives the stem cell and uh, from his or her paper blood, the stem cell usually moves to the patient marrow and the stabilized there is the stabilized there and the grow uh, and the produce the product of the uh, mature red blood cell, white blood cell, and bright red count. So it requires usually two or three weeks from the stem cell infusion to get the whole recovery of paper blood cell. So during the two or three weeks, patient is admitted in the laminar pro room and the, the patient will receive supportive care, including the immunosuppressive drugs to prevent the graft rejection. And the uh, patient will receive the antibiotics to prevent the infection, including the antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, and the pneumocystis carrying infection. And during the two or three weeks, the blood uh, status is uh, relatively very, very cytopenic. So the patient is required to receive the transfusion regularly. So after the two or three weeks of supportive care, if the allergen cell transplantation is successfully done, the patient's blood stem, blood purple blood cell is recovered completely. And after that, when the, white, white, the absolute neutrophil count is more than 1,000 and the hemoglobin level recovers and the platelet count is more than 100,000, the patient is uh, transported to the general ward and after that the patient is discharged and after that patient will uh, follow the up to receive the post-transplantation monitoring and therapy. So this is whole scheme of blood bone marrow cell transplantation, and after that, the patient is followed up using the, the various way of monitoring, including the uh, engraftment monitoring, the cytopenia monitoring, the infection monitoring. So this is the overview of a bone marrow transplantation, and the next time I will explain the whole details of the bone marrow stem cell transplantation according to the specific topics in a very brief way and in a very easy way. Thank you for listening my, to my explanation and I always thank to all the uh, uh, 
all the pediatrician, all the nurses, and all the call workers who is work who are working to make cure of the leukemia and the hematologist disease. And I hope that all the patient and the guardians, his or her family, will be happy and healthy. Thank you for listening.